Hi! If you've been watching my videos for quite a while, you might notice that this is not my usual format. I've been quite busy for several weeks, but now I finally have more free times. However, those free times are filled with Monster Hunter Wilds, which might be expected by some of you. So I thought, you know what? Let's do a relatively easy to make video. I've been wanting to talk about this for quite a while, and I thought, hey, maybe this is a good time. AI. It's been a somewhat controversial topic for quite a while. You might have heard that a lot of people lost their job because they are getting replaced by AI. Luckily for me, AI will not be replacing zoologies. Well, at least for now. Fundamentally, I am not against AI. If AI can truly improve our life, then sure, why not? The problem is, some of the application is, let's just say, not appropriate. In my personal opinion, of course. Since I am a zoologist, I'm only gonna talk about AI in the context of zoology. AI is definitely useful for zoology. The easiest example I could give, which is also practical for the public, is computer vision. Some apps or website provides the ability to identify animals with computer vision. To put it simply, it's like a Pokedex. You take a picture of said animals, it'll give you the identification, so you'll have an idea of what you're looking at. Not just visuals. Some also provide the ability to identify animals based on their sound. The problem with this is the fact that it's not perfect. Well, I guess that's obvious. Most of the time, the identification is either too generic or straight up wrong. That's why, in websites such as iNaturalist, the auto-identification is not enough. People will add identification suggestion for your observation. And yeah, species identification is not easy for a lot of animals, which is why you do need an actual human being for that task. Again, at least for now. If someday we have an AI that could accurately identify animals to the species level, honestly, that would be awesome and very helpful. I don't think we'll reach that stage though, at least not in my foreseeable future. AI will also be useful if it is trained to the specific task for specific research. If you are curious and you want to see some examples, you could check out this publication. Now, what's disappointing for me is the usage of generative AI in many cases. The one that is mostly accessible by basically everyone. A little context. I am an educator. You could even say education is my passion. I teach undergraduate students in universities. Lately, I noticed that a lot of students are using ChatGPT or something similar. Some lecturers even encourage using those. What's even funnier for me is, I've even seen people holding a seminars on how to use generative AI to produce research articles. Which is kinda outrageous for me. Maybe I'm too old school, but who knows. Now, fundamentally, I'm okay with students using ChatGPT or something similar. It could potentially be a useful tool. However, what I don't like is, Many students use it without thinking. They just copy-paste the answer given by ChatGPT without even thinking about whether the answer is correct or not. That is not helpful for education. And funnily enough, when students do this for the exam in my class, the answer is usually incorrect. Some are even out of topic. But that's because my questions are usually a bit trickier and demand an actual understanding of the topic. I imagine if other lecturers are giving relatively straightforward questions, students could ace the test without even understanding anything, which is definitely not a good academic practice. Universities should be a place where students learn how to think. It should be a place to hone your logic and rationality. If you simply want to learn some trivia, you could just browse Wikipedia or watch educational YouTube videos from your home. Honestly, you'll learn more trivia by doing so. Again, if your sole intention is to learn some trivia. University life should give you more than that. However, if you went through university by using generative AI for everything, then why? What's the point? It's not like it's cheap either. In fact, the tuition is expensive for a lot of people. It would not be worth it at all. Now, about the producing publication with generative AI, Honestly, I don't even know how is that even acceptable. We already have several problems in scientific publications. For example, 
falsified data and non-reproducible result. I couldn't think of how an AI-generated publication would be considered valid in terms of scientific method. Well, not in zoology at least. Do tell me if it is technically possible in other fields though. I'm genuinely curious. Now, finally, the thing that pushed me into wanting to talk about this topic, AI-generated images and videos. When I was a kid, sometimes when I look up for images of certain animals on Google, there were barely any. Like, legit, only two or three images came up and one of those was not even related to what I was looking for. Fast forward, when I was an undergraduate student, there were many results. However, some of those results are not the animal that I was looking for. The problem is, sometimes, we don't even know that. I mean, that's the point, right? We were looking for images on Google because we wanted to know what they look like. Perhaps some of you would think, oh, that problem could be avoided by clicking on the image, properly reading the web page, reading the description, etc. Well, true, but that's not always the case. Sometimes, the uploader simply made a mistake, an honest mistake. Could be a misidentification, could simply be a mistake when writing the articles. Another case is when a species was not considered its own species back when its author uploaded the image or wrote the page. Point being, there are many cases where Google would show you images of animals that could be somewhat similar to what you're looking for, but not exactly it. That problem persists to this day. However, now there is an extra problem when looking for images on Google. AI-generated image. This is especially prevalent when looking up prehistoric animals. In many cases, the first result is AI-generated image. Real example. Few months ago, I was looking for Matriorincus image on Google. And the first result I got was this. And I was like, what am I even looking at? And I laugh. Yes, I laugh. Because for me, this is obviously fake. Not even close. However, that's not always the case for other people. Some people might legitimately think this is what Matriorincus looks like, or at least close to this. In the past, we had to tell people Dilophosaurus don't have frills. That's easily explainable because Jurassic Park integrates Chlamydosaurus kingis DNA or something like that. Now, in the case of this Matriorincus image, I don't even know how to explain this. This is far off from the fossil. So yeah. However, some AI-generated images are, let's just say, not that far off. For example, this image. Some people would think this is real. Perhaps because their exposure to a juvenile penguin is limited from, I don't know, happy feet or something like that, probably. Maybe they had seen juvenile emperor penguin once or twice, but don't exactly remember what they look like. But still, more people will be skeptical if it's just an image or two. Because, let's be real, doctored images are a thing ever since the early internet era. However, videos were harder to be tinkered with. Emphasis on were. Nowadays, AIs are getting better at tinkering or even generating videos. Even to this day, I could see some AI-generated videos being shared by many different accounts on Twitter, which is kinda expected to be honest. A lot of people are seeking for engagement for the revenues after all. What's quite unexpected for me is the fact that a lot of people think those videos are real. Like I said earlier, those videos are obviously fake for me because most of the time, I'm already used to seeing the real animals. I know their generic behavior, etc. However, like I said, that is not the case for many people. What's even worse is, there are accounts that usually share videos of real animals, real footage, but also share AI-generated videos here and there. Those accounts might be the source for zoology or natural sciences knowledge for many people. Some people might follow those accounts to learn in the first place, which is why, Polluting real footage with AI-generated images or videos could be detrimental for the general education. I've heard this is also the case for some educational channel on YouTube, but 
I myself am not familiar with this case because, to be honest, I don't really watch this kind of content. My YouTube feed is filled with video games and card games content, so yeah. But if it is true, then that is very unfortunate. One of the things which is also weird for me is the fact that some mini zoos use AI generated images. I don't know if that's just a thing in my country or if that's also the case in other places. But yeah, why? One of the reasons zoos exist is because people want to see real animals. Looking at documentaries on TV was not enough. Looking at pictures on books was not enough. That's why people visit zoos. So why are you putting AI generated image on your zoo when the real animal is literally right there? Why couldn't you just take a photo of said animals? Or, you know, just do a simple Google search, look for Creative Commons images, and just use those. It's not even hard. Alright, so why does AI generated stuff bother me so much? That's because zoology is based on evidence, and those evidence includes footage, photographs, recordings, and videos. Sometimes we look at photographs or videos and we realize there is something unique about said animals, things that we didn't know this before. And sometimes that is the starter of our research. The other thing is the example I gave earlier. Sometimes we look up images of specific animals because we want to know how they look like, whether they have some morphological varieties, what kind of habitat do they live in, etc. In many cases, those animals are animals from a whole different continent. You know, from the other side of the world, basically. Which we couldn't access in the first place. In those cases, the only way we could observe them is from images and videos. And sound recording, of course. But yeah, now it's getting harder to do so because the results are polluted with AI-generated stuff. Experienced zoologists might be able to easily identify those. But... What about newbies? What about students? What about the public that just want to learn by themselves? That's the problem. One last thing that might not be relevant to a lot of people, but one that I personally have been facing is AI bots, or something similar. I don't exactly know the correct terms for those. Let me give you a real example. In some of my videos, I got a comment saying I was wrong, followed by a wall of text. Whenever I got this kind of comment, I'll always read it carefully. Why? Because I'm genuinely trying to make a credible content. Because my channel is an educational channel. I always try to not give any misinformation and not cause any misunderstanding. That's why you'll sometimes see a pinned comment in some of my videos filled with clarification and correction. Anyway, back to the topic. The thing with these AI bots is, sometimes they open with, you're wrong and then literally write the same information that I gave in the video. Or, they are spreading misinformation themselves. The problem is, some people might not know that these bots are writing outrageous stuff. Because parts of what they are writing are indeed correct, but the rest are not. So some of you might believe what these bots wrote. The problem for me is, one, it's quite a nuisance to be honest, and two, Sometimes I miss this kind of comment, and it stays in my comment section without any clarification from me. That could complicate things and causes more confusion and misunderstanding of the topic. And, like I say, I'm genuinely trying to make a credible content and be responsible of what I'm showing to the public. Which is why, sometimes I'm worried that this could happen while I'm quite busy. And I will be quite busy from time to time, because I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I teach undergraduate students too, and this channel is a one-man channel. I handle everything you could see on this channel. Every single content. So yeah. To sum it up, machine learning is indeed very helpful in research. I couldn't say the same thing for generative AI though. For now, with how it is currently used, generative AI is a detriment for zoology. One step forward, but several steps back. It creates a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation. Personally, I don't mind if you enjoy generating stuffs with AI. And I don't mind if you enjoy AI-generated stuffs. However, please do so in your own circle. Don't be a detriment for others. 
Put a big label saying this is AI generated on your AI generated stuff. Put it in the caption, put it on the images or videos, make it clear that it is not a real footage. That way, those who enjoy AI generated stuff could still enjoy it, while those who are not deliberately seeking AI generated stuff won't think they are looking at real footage. I don't think that's an outrageous thing to ask for. Unless you're actively trying to fool other people, then you yourself are problematic. But anyway, that's my overall thought about this topic. Let me know what you think. Next week will be the usual format. Right now, I'm gonna dive back into Monster Hunter Wild. If you're also on your playthrough, then hey, hope you enjoy the game. If you're not playing Monster Hunter Wild, then hey, hope you enjoy whatever you are doing. Thank you for listening. That's all for this video. Enjoy your day.